So welcome to the training session on weekly COVID-19 vaccination data reporting for dialysis facilities. My name is Elizabeth Kalyle and I work with the Division of Healthcare Quality Promotion at CDC. There are four objectives for today's webinar. The first objective is to introduce the value in reporting weekly COVID-19 vaccination data. Next, we will go over how facilities can use NHSN to track weekly COVID-19 vaccination data for dialysis patients. We will then review the module changes for September. At the end of the presentation, we'll review how to report data in detail. So now we'll go over how NHSN data can be used to improve COVID-19 vaccination coverage in facilities. By participating in NHSN, Dialysis facilities can report COVID-19 vaccination data for patients each week through the dialysis component. Dialysis facilities are required to report data in 2021. For more information on these requirements, facilities are encouraged to contact their ESRD networks. The networks can provide the specific details on when reporting COVID-19 vaccination data through NHSN for healthcare personnel and patients should follow. The NHSN modules are designed to ensure that reporting COVID-19 vaccination percentages are both consistent over time within a single healthcare facility and comparable across facilities. Using NHSN to monitor COVID-19 vaccination may also result in increased COVID-19 vaccination coverage because improvements in tracking and reporting vaccination status will allow dialysis facilities to better identify unvaccinated persons. There are several ways dialysis facilities can put these data to good use, engage the success of COVID-19 vaccination programs. NHSN now allows facilities to monitor vaccination trends on a weekly basis to see how rates are improving for patients. The data also will show if there are certain groups with lower vaccination rates. So for instance, a dialysis facility might note that some patient groups have consistently lower rates of vaccination than others. Or the facility may decide to improve their internal tracking systems. For example, turning to computer-based or automated tracking systems to better identify unvaccinated patients in real time. COVID-19 vaccination data collected through NHSN can also inform decision-making. For instance, the data can provide jurisdictions and partners with critical information, which can then guide the COVID-19 vaccination planning and implementation efforts. The data can also help identify and address issues surrounding vaccine supply. In addition, the data can aid 
public health emergency response activities. For instance, the data may provide insight into vaccine coverage and distribution, thereby informing federal tracking systems. Now we'll briefly go over the data facilities can report each week. COVID-19 vaccination data for patients of dialysis facilities are entered through the NHSN dialysis component. This slide shows an example of the data entry screen. There are five key questions for this weekly COVID-19 module in NHSN. First, what is the number of current patients receiving care? Second, what is the number of patients who have ever been vaccinated for COVID-19? This number is the cumulative number of vaccinated patients. Third, what is the number of these patients who do not receive vaccination due to other conditions, such as medical contraindications? For question four, facilities report on the number of patients who have received an initial complete COVID-19 vaccine series and who are eligible to receive an additional dose or booster. The final question, number five, has for the number of patients who received an additional vaccine dose or booster since August of 2021. So now we'll go over the key updates that were implemented for the module in September. Question 3.2, offered but declined COVID-19 vaccine. And question 3.3, unknown COVID-19 vaccination status were previously optional, but now these are required fields. A new rule has also been built into the NHSN application that requires all patients reported in question one must be accounted for in question two or three. Also throughout the presentation, we placed a green star next to key updates for your reference. The first question on the COVID-19 vaccination data collection form for dialysis patients requires that facilities report on the total number of patients receiving dialysis care from the facility during the reporting week. The reporting week runs from Wednesday through Tuesday. Facilities should include all in-center patients and home dialysis patients such as those receiving hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis at a site outside of the facility. Please note that all questions on the data collection form are based on this population of patients. On the data entry screen for question one, facilities are required to enter the total number of all patients receiving dialysis care from the facility.
You can see on the slide that the required category is indicated by a red asterisk and box on the screen. It's optional to report the number of in-center dialysis patients and home dialysis patients. So this slide outlines some key points about question number one. Facilities should count patients who are receiving dialysis care during the week rather than all patients who have ever been treated through the facility. It's important to remember that dialysis patient categories are mutually exclusive. For question one, each dialysis patient should be counted only once. If a patient received care in center and also home care during the week, report according to the type of care they receive first. So for example, if a patient received in-center care, but then received home dialysis care later in the week, the facility would report the patient only in the in-center patient dialysis category. Now we'll review how to complete question two. Question two asks for the cumulative number of patients currently receiving care reported in question one and who have ever received COVID-19 vaccine at the facility or elsewhere. So of the patients currently receiving care from the facility for the week, report on the total number of all patients who have ever received vaccination since the COVID-19 vaccine became available in December of 2020. So in this example, you'll see that out of 100 patients receiving care, 40 received dose one of the Pfizer COVID-19 and five received both the first and second dose of the vaccine. For question two, facilities also have the option to report vaccination data based on whether they received care at the dialysis center or through home dialysis services. So let's go through the steps of reporting vaccination data for question two. For this question, you'll see a drop-down box of the COVID-19 vaccines. Click on the box and select the vaccine for which you would like to report data. At this time, you'll see the Pfizer, Moderna, Janssen, and unspecified COVID-19 vaccine manufacturer options. The second step is to enter the cumulative number of current patients who have received only one dose of the vaccine. In this example, a total of 40 patients received only dose one of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. The third step is to enter the cumulative number of current patients who received both dose one and two of the COVID-19 vaccine. So from this slide, you can see that five patients received both doses of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. Entering COVID-19 vaccination data on specific categories of in-center and home dialysis patients is optional. 
Just remember that if you enter vaccination data for any of the optional patient categories, the number of patients receiving vaccine in that category cannot exceed the total number of patients receiving vaccine. This example shows that a total of 30 in-center dialysis patients received only dose one of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. 10 home dialysis patients received only dose one of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. This is acceptable as the sum of these two categories does not exceed the total number of 40 patients receiving only dose one of the vaccine. Also, the number of patients receiving vaccine in that category cannot exceed the total number of patients at the facility. This example shows that a total of 30 in-center dialysis patients received only dose one of the Pfizer vaccine. Five in-center dialysis patients received dose one and two of the Pfizer vaccine. This is allowed as the sum of these two categories, 35, does not exceed the total number of 80 in-center dialysis patients receiving care during that current week. Patients may have received different types of vaccines if some patients received another type of vaccine, then return to the drop-down box and select the other vaccine. Next, please repeat steps one to three as we described previously. This slide outlines some key points about question two. Facilities should include patients receiving COVID-19 vaccine at the facility or elsewhere, such as a pharmacy. For those patients receiving vaccine elsewhere, they should provide documentation of vaccination. Please note that the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines require two doses for full vaccination. Only one dose is given for the Janssen vaccine. If a patient's medical record indicates that they received full COVID-19 vaccination outside the facility, but information for the, for the specific vaccine manufacturer is unavailable, the facility should report the patients in the unspecified manufacturer category. After a facility enters data for question two, NHSN automatically calculates the number of patients who have completed their vaccination and are fully vaccinated. In the example on this slide, we see that a total of 15 patients have completed their COVID-19 vaccine series. And just be sure to report cumulative data each week rather than only new data for question two. For instance, 10 patients may have received only dose one of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine during the first week of data collection. During the second week of data collection, five more patients received only dose one of the vaccine. Therefore, you'd report that at the end of the second week, the cumulative total of 15 patients received only dose one of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. Question number three covers patients with other conditions. 
The facilities are required to report the cumulative number of patients with a medical contraindication to COVID-19 vaccine. Medical contraindications are comprised of having a history of severe allergic reaction to vaccine or components. Please note that if you enter data for a specific patient category, the number of patients with other conditions in that category cannot exceed the total number of patients with other conditions. So for example, if a total of two patients have medical contraindications to the COVID-19 vaccine, the combined number of in-center dialysis patients and home dialysis patients with medical contraindications cannot be greater than two. Please note that the term exclusion is listed in question 3.1 in the NHSN application. However, this is no longer used and facilities are encouraged to consult CDC guidelines using the link on the slide for the most current information on contraindications. Questions 3.2 and 3.3 .3 are now required. Question 3.2 asks for the cumulative number of patients in question one who declined COVID-19 vaccine. For this question, facilities should include patients who declined a vaccine for philosophical, religious, or other reasons that are not considered medical contraindications as defined in question 3.1. Question 3.3 asks for the cumulative number of patients in question number one, whose COVID-19 vaccine status is not known. So for example, facilities may include patients who might claim to be vaccinated, but do not have documentation. When completing data entry, please note that all patients included in question one must be accounted for in questions two and three. That the sum of numbers entered for question two and three does not equal the total number of patients entered in question one, an error message will appear on the screen in the NHSN application. For question four, facilities report on the number of individuals in question two who are eligible to receive an additional dose or booster of the COVID-19 vaccine. We will now go over a few key terms. Fully vaccinated refers to an individual who has completed an initial vaccine series. An additional dose or booster refers to COVID-19 vaccine received at least two weeks after completion of an initial vaccine series. Specifically, an additional dose is administered when the immune response following an initial completed vaccine series is likely to be insufficient. A booster dose is administered when the initial sufficient immune response to an initial completed vaccine series is likely to have waned over time. Please note that a booster dose is not yet approved and the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices is expected to, in to issue recommendations based on a review of the evidence. Please refer to the link on the slide for guidance to determine individuals eligible to receive additional doses or boosters after receiving the initial completed vaccine series.
individuals should be counted as eligible to receive an additional dose if they received an additional complete two-dose mRNA COVID-19 vaccine series at the facility or elsewhere since December 2020. And if they're eligible to receive an additional dose or booster of the vaccine per CDC guidance. When determining individuals who are eligible for an additional dose, facilities are encouraged to do their best. For instance, facilities may not have access to the medical information necessary to determine eligibility. In these situations, facilities should report any individuals who received an additional dose as eligible to receive the dose for question four. Question five asks for facilities to report on the cumulative number of individuals in question four who have received an additional dose or booster of the vaccine at the facility or elsewhere since August of 2021. You should count individuals who received an additional dose or booster at the facility or elsewhere. Also, weekly cumulative data should be reported for the question. So for example, in week one, five patients received an additional dose or booster of the vaccine. In week two, three more patients received an additional dose or booster of the vaccine. Therefore, for week one, Facilities should report that five patients received an additional dose or booster. And then for week two, facilities should report that eight patients received an additional dose or booster. So now we'll review the steps on how to report data for additional doses of the COVID-19 vaccine for question five. You will see a drop-down box of the vaccines. Click on the box and select the vaccine for which you would like to report data. Next, you'll enter the cumulative number of patients who received an additional dose or booster of the vaccine. Patients may receive different types of vaccines. So for step three, if some individuals received other vaccines, then return to the drop-down box and repeat steps one and two. After a facility enters data for question five, NHSN automatically calculates the number of patients who received an additional dose or booster. Now we'll review a few notes about completing question four and five. A facility may not have any individuals who are eligible to receive the dose or booster of the COVID-19 vaccine. In this case, since questions four and five are required fields, please enter zero for question four. For question five, select any manufacturer from the drop down box and enter zero. If a facility does not have any individuals who received an additional dose or booster of the vaccine, facilities should select any manufacturer from the drop down box and proceed to enter zero for question five. Please note that only individuals who have received an additional dose or booster should re be reported in question five.
Now we'll review a few scenarios that facilities may encounter during data reporting activities. A facility may not be able to determine if an individual is eligible for an additional dose at this time because they do not know the individual's health status to identify if he or she is moderately to severely immunocompromised. In this case, the individual should not be reported in question four or five. In another example, a facility has a patient who only received dose one of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. However, the patient expressed an interest in receiving an additional dose of the vaccine. But in this instance, the facility should not include the patient in questions four and five, since he or she did not complete an initial COVID-19 vaccination series. In a third example, a facility is not aware or unable to determine whether any patients currently meet the eligibility criteria for receiving an additional dose or booster dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. However, two patients have documentation of receiving the additional dose. For this case, the facility should assume that these two patients were eligible to have received an additional dose of the vaccine and include these patients in question four and five. Question six consists of required questions on the availability of COVID-19 vaccines for patients. First, indicate if your facility is enrolled as a COVID-19 vaccine provider. If the facility is enrolled as a vaccine provider, indicate if the facility had sufficient vaccine supply to offer all patients the vaccine. If the facility is not enrolled as a COVID-19 vaccine provider, Indicate if the facility has made other arrangements for patients to receive vaccine. So for example, the facility may have a referral system in place for patients to receive COVID-19 vaccination at a health department or pharmacy. Also, CDC encourages facilities to contact their state or local health jurisdiction if there is insufficient supply of vaccine and if the facility would like to become a COVID-19 vaccine provider. CDC would like to remind facilities to report any adverse events to the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, or VAERS. When completing a VAERS report, please enter the facility's five-digit NHSN org ID in box 26 of the VAERS form. This will assist us with identifying reports from NHSN sites. Serious adverse events include death, life-threatening conditions, or inpatient hospitalization that occur after vaccination, even if it's not certain that vaccination caused the event. Facilities should also report vaccine administration errors. Please note that other clinically significant adverse events may be outlined in fact sheets for provider emergency use authorization or prescribing information. CDC has created a table of instructions document that provides definitions for all categories and questions on the data collection form. Facilities should review all instructions before collecting and entering COVID-19 vaccination data into NHSN.
please use the link listed on the slide to view the instructions. This slide reviews a data tracking worksheet that CDC developed for dialysis facilities. This is an optional tool in an Excel spreadsheet format that is designed to help with data collection. Facilities can enter patient vaccination information and select the week of data collection. The worksheet will automatically calculate data that should be reported to NHSN each week. Please note that CDC is currently revising the worksheet. We hope to have this reposted to the CDC website within the next few weeks. In addition to reporting COVID-19 vaccination data for patients through the NHSN dialysis component, facilities are also able to report weekly COVID-19 vaccination data for healthcare personnel. To report data on healthcare personnel, please use the NHSN healthcare personnel safety component. Reporting healthcare personnel vaccination data is quite similar to reporting for patients. Facilities reported on the total number of healthcare personnel who are eligible to work at the facility for at least one day during the week. For those personnel, data on COVID-19 vaccination status and vaccine supply are reported. Please note that facilities are now required to recreate a monthly reporting plan before entering data on the personnel in the healthcare personnel safety component. Training materials for this reporting can be accessed using the link on the slide. Now we'll briefly talk about the steps you will need to take to report weekly COVID-19 vaccination data. First, we'll go over some key roles in an HSN. The facility administrator is a person enrolling the facility in an HSN, is the only person who can activate additional components, as add, edit, and delete rights to facility data, users, and users' access, has authority to nominate and join groups for data sharing, and is the only person who can reassign the role of facility administrator to another user. There can only be one facility administrator per facility. Users have the ability to view, enter, and analyze data, but these rights are determined by the facility administrator. Users may also be given administrative rights. We will now go over a few main points for new users to NHSN. Once new user information has been saved in NHSN, that user will receive an automated welcome to NHSN email with instructions to begin the process of becoming a NHSN user. After agreeing to the NHSN roles of behavior, the new user will receive an automated email to register with SAMS. SAM stands for Secure Access Management Services and provides secure online access to CDC applications. After registering with SAMS, the new user receives instructions to create a SAMS account and complete an identity verification process. During the process, be sure to follow the instructions carefully to prevent delay in processing documentation. 
You'll receive confirmation from SAMS once these documents are approved and a grid card will be issued to you. Please note that it will take at least two or three weeks for a new user to access NHSN. Users should be sure to log into NHSN using their SAMS card at least one time each year so that it will remain active. Because the SAMS card is user specific and not facility specific, an individual with user access to multiple facilities through the same email address could enter data into those facilities using the same SAMS card. More information about the SAMS process can be found using the link on the slide. NHSN highly recommends that if there is a change in NHSN facility administrator, he or she should transfer that role to another user in NHSN prior to leaving the facility. If the previously designated NHSN facility administrator has left your facility prior to reassigning that role to another person, you can request reassignment using the facility administrator change request form at the link on the slide. Please do not re-enroll the facility in NHSN. After the NHSN helped us completes the reassignment, the newly designated facility administrator will be able to start the new NHSN user onboarding process. So now we'll go over the data entry process. Once you're on the NHSN landing page, facilities will need to select the dialysis component in the drop-down box. Once you're on the home page for the dialysis component, click on COVID-19 on the left-hand navigation bar. You will then select the weekly vaccination option. You will then see a screen in a calendar format for the vaccination summary data. To report weekly COVID-19 vaccination data, please click on the week for which you would like to enter data. You will now see the data entry screen for entering weekly COVID-19 vaccination data for patients. Complete the required data fields indicated by red asterisks. The tab key can be used on a computer keyboard to move across columns. If there are not any patients reported for a required field, please enter zero. After completing data entry for patients, please be sure to click on the Save button at the bottom of the screen. After clicking on the Save button, a message should appear indicating that your data had been saved successfully. Once data have been entered and saved in NHSN, you will see a tab for each existing record on the calendar page. To edit weekly data for patients, click on the COVID-19 Patients tab. The data entry screen with data entered previously will appear. 
After editing data, please click on the Save button at the bottom of your screen. So now we'll review how to report cumulative COVID-19 vaccination data in more detail. So in this example, the facility starts with 50 patients receiving care during the first week of reporting. 10 of those patients received dose one of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine, while five patients received dose one and two of the vaccine. During the second week of reporting, the same 50 patients are still receiving care through the facility, but now five more patients receive dose one and two of the vaccine. So for week one, we have 10 patients who are to receive dose one of the vaccine. For week two, five more patients receive dose one of the vaccine. Therefore, for the second week, you'd report that a total of 15 patients have now received dose one of the COVID-19 vaccine. During the third week of reporting, the facility is still caring for the same 50 patients, but now three more patients received dose one of the COVID-19 vaccine and 10 patients received their second dose of vaccine. So during the second week of reporting, 15 patients received dose one of the vaccine. Then three more patients received dose one of the vaccine during the third week. Of these 18 patients, 10 received their second dose of vaccine. Therefore, this leaves us with eight patients who received only dose one of the COVID-19 vaccine by the end of the third week. Also for the third week, facilities will report on the cumulative total of 15 patients that have received dose one and two of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. To arrive at this number, we'd add the five patients who received both vaccine doses from week two to the 10 patients who received their second vaccine dose for week three. The next few slides will outline some resources that may be helpful to you. The dialysis facility component website contains links to the data collection forms, tables of instructions, training slides, data tracking worksheets, and CSV file templates and instructions on reporting weekly vaccination data. Please note that the slides from today's presentation are posted on the NHSN website. The recording of today's presentation will also be posted soon. If you have questions about NHSN, please send an email to user support at nhsn at cdc.gov. Please include weekly COVID-19 vaccination in the subject line of your email. This concludes the presentation. Thank you so much for your time.